As disciples of Jesus, we're meant to walk his way, to imitate him, to learn from him. Jesus spent a lot of time up on the mountains, praying, discerning his way forward, finding courage when he needed it. He spent time walking up and down mountains in solitude and with crowds. So just like Jesus, it seems important that on this mountain Sunday, we get up in the mountains and see what we can do about meeting God as well, just like he did. Well, maybe not exactly like Jesus. After all, he didn't have a sick wife at home and kids that he had to pick up by three from school. There's a lot of stuff these days that makes it tricky to take time to climb a mountain. But I do worry that it's actually the time that it takes to get up there, which is part of the point and part of what makes it such a great place to meet God. About 20 years ago, I rode with a friend to the Twelve Apostles. It took us four days from Adelaide. Our bums were sore by the time we got there. My knees were so sore that I still have trouble with them. It was February, it was stinking hot, and over four days we sweated it out and talked together as we made our way there. And when we got there, it was incredible. It was a divine moment. We spent hours there just enjoying the fact that we'd made it. I didn't realise it at the time, but a lot of the conversations on the way to the Twelve Apostles were part of what put me on the path to being a Christian, travelling as I was with a Catholic woman that I'd met on her travels over here from South Africa. About 10 or 15 years later, I went to the Twelve Apostles with my wife. We left Adelaide, just like I did the first time, but we left in a car, and about six hours later we were there. The car was air-conditioned. It was a long drive, but still it was hardly gruelling. We got there, we had a look around, it was nice. We stayed probably a bit longer than the people flying in by helicopter, and then we kept going. There was something about how hard it was to get there, the time taken to get there and the conversations on the way that made getting to the Twelve Apostles such a divine moment in the first place. And I suspect the same is true of the stories of divine encounter on the mountains that we hear in the Bible. I probably should confess my hypocrisy before I go too far. That mountain that you saw in the background at the start of reflection isn't actually where I am now. The drive that I went along was simply a drive out to our block, elevation all of about 35 metres. Like I said, I have to get back home soon to my sick wife and pick up my kids from school, so there wasn't time to actually get up on the mountain today. Where I actually am is sitting on the toilet out at our bush block on about the only steep bit of land behind me so that it looks somewhat convincing. I hope shattering that illusion doesn't take away the possibility of learning something and thinking about things in this reflection. Is part of the point meant to be that it's actually hard to get up the mountain? That it takes discipline? Part of being a disciple? What's your experience of divine moments been? Of divine revelation, of in some way meeting God? Has it come easily or has it only come after some kind of struggle? Either with a literal or a metaphorical mountain? And what about learning? Jesus taught the crowds up on the mountain as well. I wonder if there was something about them needing to walk to get there, to travel together in community, to sit down somewhere quite separate from their usual lives that made it possible for Jesus to teach them. I don't know about you, but now I find it easier than ever to learn, at least in theory. In the old days when I was a student, you had to go to a library and you had to look around and find books and most of the time they wouldn't let you take the book out, so you just had to sit there in quiet and solitude and read and learn. These days I can just download a book for a couple of dollars off the internet. There's more sermons that I can download off YouTube than I have hours in my life to ever possibly watch. It's easy to come across learning material. What's difficult, I find, is actually concentrating on the learning material. Life is still whizzing around me as I quickly dabble with some of that stuff. You might be having the same experience right now if you're watching this online. Maybe I'm talking a little bit too slowly for you and you've started checking emails in the background, or you might be Facebooking or tweeting how you think the reflection's gone so far. Maybe there's kids up above pounding around on the floorboards or you know you have to be somewhere in 10 minutes and you're distracted thinking about that already. It's really tempting not to take time to climb mountains these days when we want to learn from Jesus.
Kind of related to that, it's actually getting harder and harder to get out of the house for many of us. On a Sunday morning to travel to a physical location, if we've got kids to drag them along and get them there as well. Maybe also having to prepare for whatever's coming up for Sunday lunch or Sunday sport, or knowing that it's the only day of the week when we can actually lie in. Getting to a Sunday service is becoming a bit like climbing a mountain for some of us. And maybe that's no bad thing. Maybe the fact that it's difficult is actually a good thing as long as we actually meet God when we get there. Which raises the question for those of you who are sitting there on a Sunday morning listening to this, is your church a place where you meet God? Is Sunday morning a mountaintop experience for you? How about for other people in your congregation and for visitors? Is it the kind of place that people would bother to struggle to get to because they know that there they will learn from Jesus, commune with other disciples and meet God? So mountains, Jesus went there to pray and reflect. He went there to teach people. He hung out with his disciples on the mountains. They sound like a great place to be. It's where Moses got the commandments and where one of the prophets, Elijah, I think it was, met God after the wind had passed by. Mountains are good. Even if maybe it's meant to be harder to get there than we make it for ourselves at the moment. But of course, there are other stories of going up the mountain that make them seem not such a pleasant thing to engage with after all. Jesus did go up the mountain to pray and contemplate, but his first trip up the mountain, he didn't meet God, did he? He met the devil. All of this I will give you, everything you can see, said the devil, if only you will bow down and worship me. Even for Jesus, the mountains were a place of temptation. Peter and James and John went up a mountain as well with Jesus. And they went out of their minds because they couldn't understand what on earth it was that was going on when they got there. So sometimes if we see a divine moment up in the mountaintop, it's hardly reassuring. Instead, we have no idea what to make of it. Jesus' first trip up the mountain, he met the devil. His last trip up the mountain before his crucifixion wasn't so great either. He was in the Garden of Gethsemane on the foot of the mountain. There he was overwhelmed with grief. He sobbed with sorrow. And yet none of his disciples were able to stay awake with him and keep him company. It was a grief-filled, desolating experience, overcome with grief to the point of death. Mountains aren't, maybe, all they're cracked up to be. Finally, the way Matthew tells the story, Jesus sends the 11 disciples back to the mountain where he taught, where he healed all of the crowds and did all those wonderful things and there they meet him again after the resurrection. They worship him but incredibly even having met him again after the resurrection some doubted. Even when we encounter God even when we encounter a divine moment and revelation there's still plenty of room for doubt on the mountaintop. And I don't know about you, but sometimes getting up on the mountain, looking down at the world and getting a bit of a God's eye perspective isn't comforting or exciting or any of those good things. It's kind of despairing to be taken out of my little world and remember all of the things that are going on around me, all of the things on the mountaintop that we might call the TV news that I can see. Lots of terrible things are happening in the world and God cares about all of them. Sometimes getting up on the mountain pulls us out of our own world and confronts us with all that's going on around us. Could drive us to despair. Hopefully it drives us to action. So mountains, a place of teaching, devotion, contemplation, community, of divine encounter. But also a place of temptation, of being bedazzled and confused, of despair and even of doubt. God offers to meet us on the mountain, but are we sure we really want to go? Perhaps the confidence we can find to answer yes to that question comes from what happened to the eleven, even in the midst of their doubt. Jesus still assumed that they would be the ones who would take the message of good news to the corners of the earth, who would incorporate people into this new community of faith, these people that followed Jesus on the way. So if we get up a mountain, whether literally or metaphorically sitting on a toilet like I am now, know that if it leads us into temptation and despair, 
we're in good company with Jesus. If it leads us into doubt, we're in good company with the eleven, who were nevertheless entrusted with the good news and the job of including more and more people in that good news in the community of Jesus' followers. So let's take time, whether it's today or this week or this year, to get up the mountain. We don't know how we're going to experience it, whether it will be terrific or terrifying. But we do know that the God who is here with us as we gather and among us is also within us and therefore will be there with us on the mountain. So let's do it. Wow. That's probably got to be the corniest finale I've come up with. But surely we can go in faith knowing that if nothing else... No, 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 no. What, why would you go up a mountain? But must you? That was a good one. Yeah, I'll probably do for now.